Hi, I'm Sean Carruthers, and welcome to How Do I on Butterscotch.com. In this series, we're taking a look at the new MacBook Air. In this episode specifically, we're going to give you a hardware tour. Now, in front of us here, we have the new 11.6-inch MacBook Air. Now, this is the smaller of the two MacBook Airs that were just released. The 13.3-inch one is the other one that was out, slightly larger, more about the size of a small notebook. This one is getting closer to the size of a netbook. Now, it's not exactly called a netbook, uh, according to Apple, and there's a couple reasons for that. Yes, it's about the same size as some of the netbooks that are out there, but unlike most netbooks, it does actually have a higher power processor. Uh, which allows it to do a lot of what a full-size notebook will do even while it's on the go. And one of the first things you'll notice about this is it has a very nice screen. So even at 11.6 inch, it has fairly high resolution. It's got an LED backlight, which actually provides very good color. And it has a glossy uh, surface in front of it, which is good for displaying those colors. Not so good if you have a little bit of uh, light in the area, ambient light that will cause reflections. So if you're working in a very bright area, not so good. If you're taking this to a coffee shop or maybe an office where you can control the light, then it's a little bit uh, easier to use. The other thing about the MacBook Air that's worth noting, even at 11.6, it does have a full-size keyboard. So unlike a lot of netbooks that are out there that have constrained keyboards that make it a little bit harder to actually type on them, this one actually has a full-spaced keyboard. The 13.6-inch uh, version of it just adds a little bit of space on the outside of the bezel here so that you still have the same size keyboard. Now, if you're planning to use this as a notebook replacement, that full-size keyboard is actually a real boon. You can do the same things on this typing-wise as you could with a full-size notebook or with a desktop machine, typically. The other thing about the Air is that it actually has a full-size trackpad on it. The entire surface of this is clickable, so if you're not used to the newer Macintosh notebooks, no matter where you are on this, you can click down and select using any point on that. Two fingers down for a right click, and uh, I said there's, there's no button along the bottom because of that. It also features gesturing, so two fingers, three fingers, four fingers on this uh, if you want, and uh, does the spin and uh, turn. So all of that is available inside this trackpad. Uh, again, full size, fully functional, despite the fact that this is more of a netbook style device. Now to get a notebook down to this sort of size, one of the first things you need to start doing is losing hardware features. And one of the first things to go in any of these things, including netbooks and in this one, is the optical drive. That's the CD or DVD drive. So if you really want to get things onto this that are only available on CD, you'll need to get an external drive or use the remote disk feature. And we'll show you how to do that in an upcoming episode. One of the other things about the MacBook Air, the previous generation specifically, that people pointed at as being not so good is the lack of connectivity of devices, specifically USB. Now this particular device actually has two USB ports, one on this side and one on the opposite side. Now unlike the previous generation of the MacBook Air, this one actually has them exposed to the outside world. The previous one had a little door that you had to lever down and get into, which didn't always accommodate drives that had a thicker bezel around the outside. These ones right here, you can use any USB device on either side, provided they don't bark up against any of the other things that are on here. We can see we have the display port here. This is for connecting external displays. It uses DVI connectivity, and it has a little dongle that you can get generally for about $29.99 for the basic one and uh, upwards for more complicated versions that do more things. On the other side of the notebook, you'll notice we also have the power connector here known as the MagSafe. We have a little magnetic connector here that you can put on like that. Uh, it just attaches using magnetism, but if someone kicks the cord, off it comes without pulling your notebook down with it. Side also features a headphone jack here, a single headphone jack. You'll also notice beside the headphone jack, there's a little grill. And if you're wondering what that is, that's actually your microphone. So if you're talking on Skype or Instant Messenger, that's what gets the audio if you don't have a specific microphone plugged in via USB. The other thing you'll notice at the top of the screen is a little camera. This is the FaceTime camera, which you can use for communicating over Skype or Instant Messenger, completing the multimedia equation with the microphone on this side. Now, the one downside of the MacBook Air is you'll notice on the bottom that there's no removable battery, and this is the same as on the previous generation of the MacBook Air. Now you notice also, as well, you have little screws around the outside. You can get into the bottom of this. There's not a lot of serviceable parts inside, so you probably don't want to go in there looking around unless you really have a problem with it. But if you're looking for a device that uh, does have a removable battery so that you can swap it out in the middle of a flight, this is not the device. There 
is generally about five hours of running time on a full charge when this thing is brand new. Obviously, that'll run down over time. Some people are reporting that with optimal settings, they're getting up to about eight hours of runtime. A large part of that is because inside the device, we don't have a moving hard drive, no spinning disks. It's actually all flash memory now. And uh, the screen uses LED backlighting, which is more efficient than fluorescent. So there's a lot of optimizations made in the hardware in this, which actually give you optimizations in the runtime. Anyways, that's a look at the hardware of the MacBook Air. Don't forget to check out the other parts in the series where we show you how to use this. And don't forget to check out the show notes for this part and the other parts of the series at butterscotch.com.